It's Umsum time! What if basketball disappeared? Oh no! I have an amazing aim! Oh, Umsum. To buy this t shirt, visit umsum.com. Firstly, tall guys generally get an upper hand in playing basketball. If basketball disappeared, huh? short guys would be one happy lot. Mm. Secondly, playing basketball is a good workout for the entire body. If basketball disappeared, huh? the fitness level of players yeah. may go down. Mm. Thirdly, if basketball disappeared, famous basketball stars will not remain that popular yeah. anymore. Mm. Fourthly, basketball is extremely popular in the USA. If basketball disappeared, basketball fans would be one sad lot. Mm. Fifthly, USA won gold medals in both men's and women's basketball tournament during the 2016 Olympics. If basketball disappeared, the entire country may go on strike. Hmm. Lastly, if basketball disappeared, people may come up with creative means of satisfying their urge of playing basketball. Yippee! Hmm. What if tennis disappeared? Oh no! I'm great at tennis! Oh, I'm sorry. Firstly, if tennis disappeared, famous tennis stars like Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, etc. would not remain that popular anymore. Mm. Secondly, if tennis disappeared, makers of tennis rackets and balls may start producing huh? goods for other sports. Mm. Thirdly, if tennis disappeared, Wimbledon, the oldest and most prestigious tennis tournament, may make way for other sports. Mm. Fourthly, playing tennis is a good workout for the entire body. If tennis disappeared, fitness level of players may go down. Mm. Fifthly, tennis champions receive a huge amount of prize money. If tennis disappeared, huh? they may have to lower their expenses. Hmm. Lastly, if tennis disappeared, popularity of table tennis may skyrocket. Hmm. What if golf disappeared? Oh no! I was getting better at golf! Oh, I'm <laughs> some. Firstly, golf is often referred to as a rich person's sport. If golf disappeared, rich huh? guys huh? may be one sad lot. Secondly, golf champions receive a huge amount of prize money. If golf disappeared, huh? they may have to lower their expenses. Mm. Thirdly, if golf huh? disappeared, famous golf celebrities may have to start learning a new sport. Hmm. Fifthly, golf courses are large and occupy a huge amount of real estate. Hmm. If golf huh? disappeared, real estate agents will be one happy lot. Hmm. Lastly, 45% of golf courses in the world are located in USA. If golf disappeared, huh? entire country may go on strike. Hmm. What if football disappeared? Oh no! I was sure of winning the World Cup this time! Oh, I'm so. <laughs> Firstly, if football disappeared, other sports like hockey, cricket, tennis may become more popular. Secondly, regularly playing football is considered a good form of exercise. If football disappeared, huh? many players may start putting on weight. Mm. Thirdly, more than half of the world's population watched the FIFA World Cup 2018. If football disappeared, huh? many people may abandon their TV sets. Mm. Fourthly, if football disappeared, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, football's biggest superstars, may not remain that popular anymore. Mm. Fifthly, football is a national passion in Brazil. If football disappeared, huh? entire country may go on a strike. Lastly, if football disappeared, huh? sale of sports shoes may plummet. Mm. Huh? What if we swallow chewing gum? No, what if? I swallow chewing gum every single time. Oh, um <laughs> some. Firstly, it is a myth that chewing gum sticks to the insides of our stomach just like it sticks to any other surface. It does not. 
It passes through the body oh. just like any other food. Our body is able to digest many parts of the chewing gum, like ah. sweeteners, <laughs> flavorings, etc., but not the gum hmm. resin. Huh? But that does not mean that it stays in our stomachs for years. In fact, just like any other waste material, oh. it is pushed through our intestines and then finally out of the body. So, is there any use of swallowing a chewing gum? The answer is a big no, because it has absolutely no nutritional value. Also note that choking may occur if big chunks of swallowed gum get stuck in our windpipe. Can sneezing make your eyes pop out? No, it makes my snot pop out. Ew, that's gross. <laughs> now listen. You might have heard your parents or friends telling that if you don't close your eyelids while sneezing, your eyes will pop out. Hmm. However, eyes popping out, also scientifically known as globe luxation, is almost impossible. This is because your eye muscles and bony eye sockets are the ones which firmly hold your eyeballs in place every time, even while sneezing. Hmm. Now, when you sneeze, a huge pressure builds up in your chest and head. However, this pressure is extremely unlikely to dislocate your eyeballs because the pressure is released through your nose and mouth. However, it is important to note that there are a very small number of cases reported in which eyeballs have indeed popped out due to sneezing. So it's certainly not impossible, but is extremely rare. What if dinosaurs never went extinct? I would have new buddies. <laughs> Dinosaurs would be much smaller today. Do you know why? Because during that time, angiosperms were beginning to take over from gymnosperms. Now, as compared to gymnosperms, angiosperms are easier to digest and require a much smaller gut size. Thus, size of herbivorous dinosaurs would have reduced and that would have gradually led to reduction in size of carnivorous dinosaurs as well. Scientists also think that dinosaurs might have become more intelligent, because dinosaurs like Troodon, who were considered smart and had a large brain compared to their body size, were beginning to evolve. But what about us? That is, humans. Humans were able to evolve because the impact of the asteroid killed the dinosaurs, triggered drastic changes in climate conditions, which led to mammalian evolution and eventually human evolution. Thus, had the asteroid oh. never crashed, we probably wouldn't have existed. Hmm. Why do we have split ends? Because the world is coming to an end. Nah. <laughs> split ends, or trichoptilosis, is a type of hair damage in which our hair strand or hair shaft splits into two or more branches. It mostly hmm. occurs at the end of the shaft. However, you can have split ends anywhere along the entire shaft. Oh. Now, our hair consists of three concentric layers. The outermost tough layer is called cuticle, the middle layer is called cortex, and the innermost layer is called medulla. Split ends occur when the cuticle gets ripped off or damaged. Now, as there is no longer any tough structure to hold the hair together, cracks begin to develop in the inner layers, thus giving rise to split ends. Now, there are many factors that can cause split ends. For example, excessive sun exposure, improper brushing or detangling, excessive blow drying, coloring, etc. Why do we get canker sores? Cause I cheat on my diet. Nah, oh. canker sores are painful ulcers that form inside our mouth. Although no one exactly knows what gives oh. rise to canker sores, Researchers suspect that they are caused by a combination of factors which include mouth injuries, spicy and acidic foods, chocolates, stress, hormonal changes, deficiency of vitamin B12, etc. But do you know how these sores are formed? According to a study, our immune system is responsible for these painful sores. When we get an injury, our immune cells release a messenger protein called tumor necrosis factor alpha. One of the functions of this messenger protein is to kill damaged cells around the injured area. However, in case of canker sores, the immune cells produce excess tumor necrosis factor alpha, which begins to kill the surrounding healthy cells as well, causing inflammation and thus creating a canker sore. Hmm. Hmm. What if a massive solar flare hits Earth? Huh? I will use my umsum shield and protect the Earth. Oh, umsum. <laughs> 
solar flares are sudden and massive eruptions of electromagnetic radiation from the sun's surface. <laughs> A massive solar flare which occurred in 1859 had minimal impact, but it would have massive disruptions today, huh? mainly because of our over-reliance on technology. The Earth's surface would be safe, but our atmosphere would bear the entire brunt of radiation, that is, radio waves, x-rays, gamma rays, etc. Firstly, there would be a major disruption of power grids, possibly leaving cities or even countries without any electricity. Secondly, our good old radio communication would be down and out. Thirdly, and most importantly, GPS and satellite communications would be hit. This would cause major problems for transportation and communication. Lastly, because of massive auroras, our atmosphere would look like a magnificent painting. What is hail? A burger rain. Nah. <laughs> Hail is a type of rain in which balls of ice called hailstones oh. fall from sky. But for the hail formation, following conditions oh. are necessary. Firstly, there must be a thunderstorm cloud. Secondly, the upper portion of the cloud should be below freezing temperature. Thirdly, the cloud should have a great vertical height. Fourthly, it should have high water content. Lastly, there must be strong uprising winds called updrafts. Now, huh? according to a recent study, hail begins to form. When updrafts lift upwards, the water droplets present at the bottom of the cloud. Now, as they ascend, the freezing temperatures causes the droplets to turn into tiny hailstones. Then, as the updrafts push these hailstones even higher, more droplets freeze onto them, creating larger hailstones. Eventually, when these hailstones become too heavy for the updrafts to hold, they fall causing hail. Why does our nose run? Because huh? it wants to defeat huh? Usain Bolt. No. Huh? We can get a runny nose due to common cold, flu, allergies, sinus infection, etc. But let's first see what we actually mean by a runny nose. Our nose consists of a mucous membrane which secretes a slimy substance called mucus. However, sometimes, this membrane produces excess mucus which comes out of our nostrils, thus causing a condition called rhinorrhea, popularly known as runny huh? nose. Hmm? But why is our body producing mucus in the first place? Mm -hmm. For protection, mucus contains mucins which give mucus its gel-like properties helping it trap germs, dust, etc., and thus preventing them from entering our body. Mucus also contains antibodies and immune cells which kill germs and other foreign particles. Besides this, mucus even warms and moisturizes the inhaled air, thus preventing our breathing passage from getting damaged. Hmm. Is running on treadmills bad? Obviously, because they're designed for sleeping. Nah. Oh. Treadmills were actually invented so that we don't need ah. to go out and we can jog as per our convenience. However, there are certain disadvantages of using a treadmill. Firstly, when we run on ground, we use our leg muscles to propel our body forward, thus allowing them to develop and strengthen. However, on a treadmill, as the propulsion belt does the work for us, it limits our muscle development. Secondly, as compared to treadmills, nature provides us uneven surfaces and turns, ah. allowing our leg muscles to learn and adapt, thus improving our muscle efficiency and lateral agility. Thirdly, most treadmills don't have a downward incline feature, hence the runners don't get the benefit of jogging down hills. Lastly, running on treadmills can be extremely boring as compared to running outdoors. In addition to this, Running outdoors helps our body to get fresh air and make vitamin D, thus improving our ah. health. Ah. Oh. Do plants poop? Huh? Obviously. That's why I bought extra toilet paper for them. Nah. Oh. If we mean a solid waste coming out ah. through an endpoint, then obviously plants don't poop. However, following situations can be equivalent to pooping in terms of plants. Firstly, a plant stores waste material in its bark and old leaves, and gets rid of it by peeling of bark and shedding of leaves. Secondly, some plants even store their waste material in the form of secretions ah. such as latex, gum, resin, etc. Thirdly, 
at night, because the stomata are closed, the excess water absorbed by the roots cannot be expelled. Hence, some plants remove this excess water through tiny pores present on the margins of their leaves. This process is called guttation. Lastly, carnivorous plants like Venus flytrap catch insects, extract their juices, and then open up, allowing the hard, solid bodies, that is, waste materials, to fall off. Hmm.